The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon and welcome to today's, uh, what is today? Today is the uh, July 22nd. It's a magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. That's right. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to have an extraordinary day, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, during this next hour, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question, and please send it sooner than later. Now, we don't have to worry so much about those Internet service providers when that email gets to me. Of course, in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Magical Monday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got the Dow trading up a um, half a point. Uh, trading out at 27.154. It is green across the board. The leader out here has been the Semiconductor Index. Let's go take a look at it in a few moments. In fact, last week, we looked at it and said wouldn't generate a topping signal, or the earliest topping signal would come this week. So we're going to go check in on that. Spot volatility index is uh, underneath the 50-day exponential moving average. It has tested and rejected that level. Trading out right now at 13.90. Gold is flat. Silver is anything but flat. It's up 23 cents or 1.5%. Uh, a light sweet crude is up a buck. Uh, I'm sorry, he's up 60 cents or 1% to the upside. Natural gas is having a nice move out here up 3%. Lead the charge, the upside beyond meat. What could be beyond meat out there? Well, it's up $19. Trading out at 196. That's 11% to the upside. Booking holdings up 17. The trade desk 12. Mercado Libre 9. Uh, Vail Resorts up nearly nine bucks. The downside, it is uh, innovative industrial something or other. Double I PR. Uh, that's straight down uh, 8% or 10 bucks. Lennox. Um, not to be confused with Annie Lennox, but this is L double I. That's uh, down 9.64 or three and a half percent. HDFC Bank. I don't have anything for that one, but it's off five percent or six dollars and change. So no, no requests thus far. Whether it's in the den by email, their lines, phone lines are open. So let's go take a look. Try to figure out what the uh, markets are communicating to you and I. And what is communicating is we've got obviously some kind of bounce going on. Now, if I, as I take a look at the ES Mini, um, not a real reason. We take a look at I could use any time frame, any intraday time frame, 30 minute, 15 minute, uh, 20 minute, uh, 60 minute, 120 minute, all the minutes that you could come up with. And I could not identify on an intraday chart a bottoming pattern per se out there. Not even per se, in reality. What we can see is since the low that was made on Friday, uh, that if we just on a 30-minute time frame basis, and we just simply do a simple wave count out there, that's me waving at you, except on the charts, we go ahead and we find that lowest low, and then we just start simply looking for higher, I don't want to say higher highs, yeah, higher highs, and once they stop uh, creating higher highs, then we go on and look for the next higher high, and that becomes our next count in this letter, in this case here, B. You and I always like to, because we love baseball, uh, I think we love baseball, we look for that seventh inning stretch out here. Uh, that would be letter G. We've only gotten this letter number uh, F on my chart, or in essence, numeral six, uh, if we were going to go ahead and paint that in there. Maybe it's going to be at that seventh wave when the uh, ES Mini uh, begins its next topping signal out here. Um, no levels of support inside the ES Mini have been 
really bust well they have not been busted through they were tested earlier in the day early this morning when price pulled back to the bottom of its 30 minute bullish structured profile that was at the 297850 level that was tagged at about well let's see what time i think around 10 or so when was it 11 o'clock eh, off by an hour so at 11 o'clock that push lower ran into support that support has uh, held says we should see a higher high more likely than not, higher than what we've seen here intraday, whether that's going to hold up going into the close, I don't know. Really been just kind of a gradual sideways, slightly rising move inside of the ES Mini out there. If we take a look at the NQ, again, we'll just stick here with the short-term time frame charts. Well, uh, I should go back and say, well, hold on a minute. If I didn't see a bottom that formed and take a look at the intraday charts, then obviously the next question out of your questions is well well steve -O, then what did cause the bottom out there now i think that was a question that i heard and i should answer that question and that's very simple uh, there was support that was the daily support of its daily market profile the bottom of that market profile is 29.69.50 the actual low on friday was 29.69.50 now you tell me how that works, considering that that market profile was uh, developed um, several days before that. How did that work? Well, we don't. You, if you want to know how it uh, works, go out and watch the YouTube videos by Stottlemyre or read some of the books out there, and you can understand the mechanics behind it. Of course, our friends over at Taz Market Profiles uh, um, improved his uh, formulae out there and improved, and it works uh, uh, muy bueno, very well. So we do know that support held on a daily time frame. Of course, then, if support held, then on a daily time frame, what's the meaning of the market out here? Well, the ES Mini, as you know, because we took a look at this last week, we know that the ES Mini generated a topping pattern. Now, the requirement of this topping pattern here, this is the Rose Wimpton indicator uh, signals, uh, one of those requirements was some type of bullish, or I'm sorry, bearish reversal signal in this case. Well, we know that that occurred. Very simple. It was a double, double whammy out there. It was both a bearish engulfing and a three river evening star pattern. Now, the responsibility of sellers at that stage when they get the sell pattern is to go down and test support. Well, they did that on Friday, and it held. But that pattern that's in play, that called that top, is still in play. It'll remain in play. The only way that that could possibly change would be a close above the top of that profile, and that's at that 30, 23, 50. And even if that happens out there, what we could see is wave number seven, letter G. We were just kind of looking at that on the 30-minute time frame chart, so on the larger scale, that potential pattern exists. But first, you've got Stevie's green line. That's at around the 3,006 area out there. That's really where price would need to close above to say, I'm going to make a run for another for you know another 15, 16, 17, 18 points up to the 30, 23 level. We're not there just yet. We're trading in between support and really resistance at about the 3,006 level inside the ES Mini. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. I want to hear from you. Steve at TFNN.com. Uh, just put a radio show question in the comment uh, subject area or give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a couple questions that have come in. Uh, one from Brian. Let me read that uh, to you out here. And uh, Brian's message, logical question out here. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, um, I'm going to answer it, but I'm not going to be able to prove it. So it's kind of like, well, okay, so why are you going to answer it? But Brian's question is this, and many people have the same question. It says, uh, Steve, do you think, as I do, that all these numbers work because enough traders watch and trade these numbers, just like the Fibonacci numbers, uh, they become at least on a short-term basis self-fulfilling prophecy? Um, I'm going to ask everybody in the den. Uh, everybody in the den, how many of you are using TAS market profiles? You have it on your chart and you're paying attention to those numbers. Or... Let's go uh, several steps. Uh, you can't hear me. This is a problem. Can't hear me. Guys in the guys in the corporate office, in please turn on the speaker. Turn on the voice out here. The folks in the den cannot hear us. Please, please do that. It's a, there we go. Mike is on. Now, how about that? We got it? You guys in the den can you hear me? That's great. Okay, good. All right. So now let me start over here. So sorry for our folks in the YouTube audience. But um, so here we go. So. So we, uh, Brian wrote a question. Brian wrote in a question. Good question out here. I'm going to answer it as best I can, but the problem is I can't prove my answer out here. So here is Brian's question. Brian's question goes like this: Steve, do you think? Because I had posed the question, you know, why did the market, the ES Mini specifically, stop at 29.69.50 out there? And Brian's question was: Do I think that uh, all these numbers work because enough traders watch and trade these numbers? For example, such as like the Fibonacci numbers out there, and they become at least a self-fulfilling prophecy. First, Brian, if there was truth to that, uh, then I would say, okay, use the 0.618 retracement level and just simply use that and trade it blindly. Just do that. You can't because they don't work. If you do that, you're gonna you're gonna do it with a paper account because what you'll clearly find out it doesn't always work like that. How do I know? I know because, Brian, I had that exact same question when I began um, becoming um, involved with understanding technical analysis out there. The question I asked, how many people in the uh, Tiger's Den subscribe and have these task market profiles on their system? Mm, very few. 
When was the last time you saw somebody on CNBC, technical analyst or fundamental analyst, come out and say, you know, the ES Mini is likely to make its way down to the 296950 area because it's got a very structured profile out there, and it may or may not find support at that level. I've never heard anyone on CNBC do it. I've never heard anyone on Bloomberg TV do it. I've never heard anyone on Fox Business News do it. And even if everybody did, there are so many different vehicles to trade out there that no, uh, yeah, the big, again, it can't be proved. It can't be proved. But here's what can be proved is these things work so beautifully well that for you and I, um, uh, we must use them, or certainly I'm going to use them on my shows with you and inside the newsletter and provide subscribers with uh, analysis as to where price is likely headed and the reasons why. And so it really doesn't matter who's using these. But the answer to your question is, no, I don't think that's why they work. I don't think, uh, I, I just think that the, this is all numbers, and so we use important numbers, and profiles uh, are developed one way, and Stevie's green line, red line is used another way out there, and... Um, they just work. The Rose Momentum Indicator top. It's got the top inside the ES Mini out here. This pattern has been around forever. Actually, I developed it, um, the version of it that I use, and I know that it has preceded. It's been present before any type of 10% um, correction, before any type of bear market, every single time. Now, when I say every single time, I'm only going back to uh, 1895. So that's as far back as, in essence, as I uh, went in testing uh, that out. But I, it doesn't mean that every time when it is present, you're going to get a bear market. But it is, it is, it has preceded every single bear market that has ever existed inside the Dow. So I, you know, as I say, I can't, I can only give you my my inclination. I can't, uh, I can't prove anything. I can't prove anything. I'll tell you what, though, I've been um, hanging around. I've been in, around enough big boy traders, as you put them in here, uh, running billions of dollars. <laughs> They're usually asking me, what do I think the markets are doing out there? These guys aren't really trading with these TAS market profiles or Stevie's Rhodes Momentum Indicator top and so on and so forth. I, It's not my experience, Brian. Um, you know, from all the different folks that I have encountered out here. So I hope that answers your question as uh, best as uh, we can. So let's go out to one of our first callers, and that is uh, Kay Rico. Uh, uh, Steve-O, Kay Rico, how are you doing today? Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Great. I'm in the country right now, but I'm leaving in six days to go back to work in Costa Rica. But I'm going to be self-publishing our book in the next 40 days for sure. Ah, oh, that's great. That's great. So how's your visit been? Uh, rest, resting and organizing and doing a, I'm doing more research on earthquakes and volcanoes than I am on trying to finish my book. But Steve, I'm very sincere about this. I mean, I'm worried about what's happening with the earthquakes that are coming west into East California, upper area. And okay. there's a major major, it's called the Diablo Canyon power plant, nuclear plant, and there's a major fault line right east of this plant. Wow. And if the earthquakes coming west with all their energy should go into this Diablo Canyon power plant, this could be the most horrendous disaster of all mankind. And I, I just can't say it enough that they've got to shut that plant down. They just have mm. to shut it down. Mm, mm, mm. Well, there are there have been uh, tons of earthquakes this year, so it yeah, oh. must be keeping you busy. Uh, even the one this past weekend or week ago or so in Greece, right? There was a yeah. fairly decent-sized yeah. earthquake 4. there, right? 5.5, 5.1, it depends on how, who's measuring it and whatnot. And then the California quakes, and uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of, I'll just call them mini-quakes, that are happening in uh, northern mid-California range. And uh, they had a 7.1 approximately, what are we, uh, I think uh, uh, July 10th or so. Right, but right. my red flags are very seriously up for this Diablo Canyon because it's right there between two fault lines. I mean, it's just, it's bad. And they, they yeah, know kind, better. Kind of amazing. Now kind they of know amazing. better that it needs to be shut down. Yeah, kind of amazing that they actually built a... Uh a, a nuclear power plant uh, uh, along a, a, a fault line, or just in California, period. In any event, hey, I know you called, you wanted to talk about energy anyways, and you wanted to yeah. talk about de 
Detroit Edison or DT. Yeah, speaking of energy, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to figure out that fault line and uh, where that energy is going next because it's in a little holding pattern or maybe building steam. The earnings report comes out Wednesday morning. I always listen to uh, how, you know, you guys talk about it takes a little breather. It's Maybe it's breathing right now. So I'll let you talk to me, please. All right. Well, look, let's do this here. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is that I see. We're about to go to commercial break. I know you're a longer-term trader on that, but just let me uh, have you ponder this. So it did make a short-term topping pattern uh, inside of its weekly time frame chart. And so when we come back from this breakout here, uh, K. Rico, we're going to talk about that. The last time that these two specific patterns were present inside of Detroit Edison DTE was back in December of 2017. It led to a fairly healthy correction out there. We'll take a look at the weekly chart of DTE when we get back to this one. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're on the line with Kay Rico uh, in Pompano Beach, Kea, as well as uh, uh, Costa Rica. And we're taking a look at uh, Detroit uh, Edison out here. TTE is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, what I was mentioning to Kay Rico and you as well, and you can watch us on Tiger TV and see the pattern. There's really two topping patterns on a weekly profile, on a weekly basis that were generated. One's the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. That uh, uh, actually confirmed last week. Uh, K. Rico was really confirmed twice out here, was confirmed once the week of June 28th, 
had a big old bearish engulfing key reversal session. And then last week we had the confirmation of a, a Three River Evening Star out there. So both of those say that what this should do is pull back. Now the price level, a natural pullback, would just take it down to 122.55 or 128.80. And that would just simply be nothing more than just a test of support. If price were to break below that, uh, then you're looking at maybe 111 out there. But the first uh, level of key support should be about 122.55 out there. I am not suggesting to you and your family members that uh, you sell that right now. Um, even though with that topping pattern, because I really believe that it would need to prove itself to us. I mean, you're in this at about a penny or somewhere in that uh, range out there. And uh, it made its uh, all time high just uh, six, seven, eight trading sessions ago. Um, what when we take a look at a daily time frame chart, this hasn't really even taken out a, a what I would call a key swing point. Yes, it has traded below. It is trading below the low from July 16th out there. That was 128.59. Um, actually, it's right. It's above it right now. But I'm using the key swing point out here, K Rico, is the hammer candle that formed on July 1st out there. And so price for me would need to close below 126.18 on a long term basis um, for me to say, OK, uh, and then I have to come back and say, well, you've got 126. 18, if price closes below that, 122.55, um, where it last broke out, that still may be where price would hold. Um, you know, so that's what I see. I don't see a, on a monthly basis out here, K Rico, I don't see a pattern yet that has identified a top. You would need to close on a monthly basis below 125.64 in order for me to say, okay, let me relook at it and see where price might fall back to. And the daily time frame itself doesn't have any topping signal out here. And so this could just be a sideways consolidation out here for Detroit Edison DTE. So my recommendation at this stage is the patterns suggest that this can continue to pull back further, but I don't know that it's the big one a la the earthquake that may or may not take place out in California. Does that help? <laughs> okay, good play on words. So in well, the meantime, I just got to okay, go with the flow, really you know, what comes analysis. off the top of the head first. And I'm going to um, take it to, to sincere to figuring this out because I really, I want to be able to focus deeply on the book and getting things really working with the marketing and everything that I hope will come sure. from the book and the political party that's going to spring out of the book. Okay, but okay. Well, touch. look, I, I um, think you I'm stay with this until you see key and, levels um, of support God broken. Bless you, man. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I still think this is headed to the 137-ish range out there, 138, at a minimum, at a minimum. But that doesn't mean that it can't pull back first. All right, my friend? Thank you. You bet. Always good to hear from you. Safe travels back to Costa Rica. Let's go to uh, Jerry in Boston. Jerry, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Thank you. Yeah, I'm interested in Safe Bulkers SB. Yeah. So tell me what you're doing and how I can help. Are you trying to get in? Are you in? No, I'm in. I'm in. I bought some at a dollar forty. Uh, I've been following this for several several years, and uh, I've never gotten into it. But uh, th their sales are based on the Balto Baltimore uh, BDI Baltimore Baltic Dry Index, yeah, which has just exploded. The last time the Baltic uh, Dry Index was at this price, the stock was at about a seven or eight, and uh, I, I was tempted to take profits. You know, you get a fifty percent gain in, in a few weeks, but sure. you know, with the, with the Baltic Dry Index like going crazy, and I think I understand it why it's going up, uh, I'm thinking I should stay with it. I was al almost toying with buying more. So, Jerry, so now you've, you're, you're going from taking profits and selling to buying more. So let me see if we can help you out here and figure out which side of that, which side of that trade you should be leaning towards. First, when you, you have been watching this for a while, and kudos for you for watching it for a while and then taking action around the buck 40. So that's great. And, and yes, you've made a nice game, but the question is, you know, uh, is that reason to go ahead and take that uh, trade off? Um, right. When you entered into this, and I use the word trade, I use that loosely. You know, was this what, what was your uh, what was your thinking? And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, so what were you thinking when you entered this trade? Was this was this possibly a longer term trade? Is this you know? Well, well I thought the Baltimore Baltic Dry Index would go from about thirteen hundred 
to about uh, 15 or 1,600. Okay. Their break-even point is, is uh, 1,400. And so that it would go into the positive earnings territory. I mean, now the damn index uh, uh, has jumped over 2,000. And I think I understand why, because all iron ore mines are coming back on that had gotten destroyed in Brazil. Yeah. And also they have a, a new uh, uh, guidelines for next year. And I think a bunch of the dry ships are shutting down because uh, they have to put in this new equipment uh, to, to cut back on pollution. And so you accidentally have increasing demand and, and decreasing supply. And so, I mean, I'm suddenly thinking this thing might go to four, three or four or five. Do, well, can you get the Baltic dry on your uh, screens? I, I don't, B, I don't, BDI. I don't have it. Wait, I'm sorry, say it again. BDI, Baltic yeah. dry index. Well, let's, let's do one thing at a time here. Let's first, let's first stay with uh, safe uh, bulkers out here. Um, and uh, because, you know, the, the worst advice that I have ever heard out there are the folks that say buy low and sell high. You want to sell tops and buy bottoms. Those are two different things out there. And so the question that you should be posing to me is, do I see a topping pattern or signal on any yes, time frame well, yeah. inside of ticker symbol SB? So let's take a look at, so here's what we first know. And take a look at these three time frame charts. We use our TAS market profiles, and we look at daily, weekly, monthly. I even have quarterly up on my screen on the very right-hand panel. Those would be the red uh, horizontal lines out there. Now, these, these market profiles, if we consider our charts to be kind of like our virtual football field, the top and the bottom of those boxes are nothing more than the first down uh, chains out there on the football field. In this case here, once you're beyond the first down, you know, it's going to continue to run until it sees a, a new profile level, uh, a new chains out there, or the play is still underway. On a daily time frame, SB, the play is still underway. They're still running the ball because uh, Friday price got above 210. That was the first down marker or resistance. And so this says it wants to continue to run higher. Then I go look at the next larger time frame weekly. Well, price got above 172 several weeks ago. That was the resistance level for it. And now we take a look at what's going on on a monthly basis. We can see that staying above 217, we don't know how the month will end. Doesn't end. Today's what, the 22nd? So not until next Wednesday, Thursday, whenever the 31st right. is out there. Uh, as long as price closes over 217, this says it wants to continue to run higher. Now we're going to a breakout here. But when we come back, I will uh, take a look at the other charts with you. We'll try to identify any kind of potential topping signal. But right now, well, I think you need to yeah, stay put. If you put. can get the BDI, I think you'll see what I'm talking about. That, okay. Uh, that, we'll, this we'll is be, an extraordinary we'll move in the Baltic Dry Index. All right. We'll All be right, back I'll in just wait. a few, folks. We'll be back in just a few. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. 
Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, safe bulkers. SB is a ticker symbol. We're doing that with Jerry in Boston. So, Jerry, let me go through this with you uh, one at a time. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, what you and I are going to notice is prices beginning to rise and do with less relative energy out there. When that happens, my, day, my charts will automatically draw those lines. This is how markets can make tops and can make bottoms. For example, SB made its bottom with that exact same pattern way back in uh, March of um, May, February. No, it was March of, of uh, yeah, March of this year out here. This pattern cannot go into effect unless we see some type of bearish reversal signal. By the way, the pattern can go away because it can get enough relative strength to just simply negate it. It just says let's pay attention or you should pay attention. Even if you do get a bearish reversal candle, uh, price would likely only pull back to 210 or 208. So that may not be a reason to sell. That's assuming that we see some type of bullish reversal signal. If we don't, then we take a look at the weekly time frame chart. And when price cleared 191, that was where the draw, that's where SB on a weekly basis had previously broken down. That really communicated to you that there is a effect, in effect, a change in trend and a change in trend on a weekly basis. The next area where price broke down on a weekly basis was $2.75. On the weekly charts, I don't see anything here to suggest that that is not where it's headed to. So the next price target for you is 275 as far as the weekly time frame chart is uh, uh, what it's suggesting to you and I. If we look at the monthly time frame out here, it's really trading in between support and resistance. Resistance in the long term, it's $4.13. It's a solid green line going across my screen. Another pattern, when markets make tops and bottoms, they can do it with this TD setup nine count. That's how it actually bottomed back in 2016. And if we just simply, it was bar number eight, 2016, hopefully you're able to watch that on Tiger TV. You'll see the uh, tool, you'll see the uh, chart that we're using. Oftentimes when prices also can make a top or a bottom, they do it with that seventh inning stretch. That is wave number seven or it's letter G. That is exactly where SB topped back in uh, March. Uh, let me get the actual, that was in March of uh, 20 second here, March of 2018, and it pulled back right to where price had broken out on a monthly time frame, right around a buck 17. Didn't actually get down to buck 17, but close enough for us. So this suggests on the bigger picture that price is trading between a buck 17 and 413 out there. If you're concerned, and then there's one great way that you can go ahead and play this to the long term. And that is, I don't know how many shares you bought, I don't need to know how many shares you bought, take your principal off the table. Just go sell enough shares to get your principal back, and then you have free shares, Jerry, and then you can let this thing ride. But right now, I don't see a top in place inside of SB. Right. I could not yes, pull, I could, yeah. I, I could not yeah, pull they, up. They, uh, the, the last time the Baltic Trade X was at this, at this price was 2014. 
Yeah, but and I can't pull up that chart, unfortunately. I would venture to say if we go back and we take a look at that, you and I will be able to find a topping pattern. So we would All be right. able to very likely find a topping pattern, no different than what you and I are doing right now. And that's why I say I don't see a topping signal here. And that's why All for right. me, I Great. would stay with the trade. Hey, thank you very much. You Take bet. Care. My pleasure. You bet. That was Jerry in Boston. Now let's get to, we have a several questions that have come in by email. See if we can get to all of them. The first one from Scott in New Mexico. And Scott is asking the question about the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. And uh, let me pull up those charts. Some will go read his uh, question out here. But the question basically is, do I still expect, is it, are the charts still, uh, is that it right there? No, where did I? Put that. Give me a second here. My apology. Um, the, I'm trying to do two things at once. I, I usually can chew gum and do a charts at the same time. So Jerry's question, Scott's question, my apology, says, uh, uh, do you still see much lower price in the Great British Pound U.S. dollar? Here's what we know, um, Scott. If we take a look at the uh, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here. I was going to do this wave count on the way down. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't here. Where was it? Which? Um, all right. Well, let's get back to what we know. Uh, first, of what I'm trying to do is try to find a bottom out here, bottom pattern. Um, so here, let me do this. So here, from this high, yeah. So three or four days ago, uh, we got that wave number seven on the way down. Uh, let me give you the exact date of that, Scott. That was on the trading session of uh, July 17th out there. So that seventh inning stretch, that wave number G, um, we always pay attention to that because it can be the identification of a top or a bottom, in this case here a bottom. Now what price has not done on a daily time frame out here, Scott, is uh, close above the top of its current bearish structured profile. It would need to close above 1.2606. And that would then say a counter trend rally up to where it previously broke down, and that would be at the price point of 1.2735. So you're asking, do I still see lower price? Right now, I see price trading in between this range of the low from July, whatever it was, 17th, I believe was the uh, day out here, and maybe a buck 26 to maybe 1.2735. That's what the daily time frame chart is showing us. Um, price has also made its way down to the bottom of its quarterly market profile. That was at 1.2337. So price would need to get below that, close below that, trade below that, to then take us all the way back to the 1985 lows out here. So when we pull this back, uh, that gets you into the range of about, oh, I don't know, around a buck 05, 1.052 out there. So we're gonna answer your question this way. Do I still see it going lower? Right now in the short term, this is giving us a bottoming signal. Uh, but this is, doesn't mean that it's bottomed and you should buy it and it's going to the moon. That is not what I see out here when I take a look at the Great British Pound U.S. dollar. I hope that that helps answer your question. Mark writes in and says, can I take a look at the GDX and tell you what I think? I think you ought to be really careful. I think, Mark from Colorado, you need to be muy grande careful out here. What is it that I see when I take a look at the GDX? Look, I don't see a topping pattern that is confirmed. That is for sure. So I'm going to answer this thing totally, 100% objectively. But what we can see is that price is pushing higher and doing a less relative strength out there. And should you receive some type of bearish reversal candle here, Mark, um, that would be an indication of a top. Now, the reality is inside the GDX, it wouldn't confirm a change in trend. You're printing out right now at 2823 until you get a close below 2551. That's pretty significant out there. So here's the deal. And I do mean it's a deal out here. Hey, if we take a look at the weekly chart, you're now in week nine of the TD setup nine count. By the way, when the GDX formed its bottom on a weekly basis, Mark, it was back during the week of September 14th, 2018. And what had preceded that low? Bar number nine of the TD setup nine count. Yeah, tops or bottoms will occur on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine if they're going to take place. I don't make this stuff up. These patterns work. These patterns are something that we pay attention to. The reason, Mark, that you must be careful out here is gold has given us all kinds of topping signals for every single time frame. Now, what do I mean every single time frame? I mean daily, I mean weekly, and I mean monthly. Just be careful. 
Just move your stop. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South Africa, African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So two more questions that have come in. Let's see if we can get to those before the end of the show. The first one coming in from Tim. Tim <laughs> wants us to take a look at the QQQ series ETF. Tim, I know you're asking for, you know, what is it doing out here? I'm going to do that by taking a look at the NQ. Let me give you some numbers to pay attention to out here. The primary number is really going to be 797565. The Q is maybe headed up there. That's the top of its bear structured profile out here. Uh, in order for it to do that, it first has to get up to Stevie's red line. It's 79.40 out there. 79.40 may be the extent of the uh, bounce out here. There is a topping pattern, a three drive to a top pattern that is in play. Even if the Qs go on and make a slightly higher high, that'll get to wave number seven. That'll be letter G which as we've seen by looking at other charts, that too can be a topping signal out here. No change in trend yet. In order for the Qs to confirm a change in trend, they must close below support. That would either be the bottom of its daily box at 77.94, or it's really its breakout or its last previous breakout or which was 77.43. So we're really kind of, I would say, neutral at the moment. You've got a topping pattern. You haven't broken out the bottoms out here, and that's what I see going on inside of the NQs out there. John Wrightson wants to take a look at. Says, hey, what do we see with regard to T? What do I expect for TBT? 
I would say TBT doesn't get a chance to really get rolling until price maybe moves just a tad higher. You see, there's also a topping pattern inside the U.S. Treasury bonds, a 30-year out here. It gave you the Rhodes Momentum Indicator top when it had that big old bear sash candle that formed. A uh, price did break and close below the daily profile out there. That lasted for two days. A new profile has formed. Price is above the top there. And so the key level of resistance, John, and in essence, that would be for TBT because that would be shorting the 30-year Treasury. Um, does We need to see a rejection of about the 150 525 ish level out there. That's what I see when I take a look at TBT based on looking at its underlying instrument, the 30 year treasury. Folks, thanks so much for being here on Magnificent Monday. Have a marvelous uh, afternoon. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, three to five. I'll be back with you on Terrific Tuesday. Thanks again for being here.